Thank you for joining us for the latest episode of the Balancing Act podcast. Today, we are joined by the Singer Lewak managing partner, Jim Petra. In this episode, Jim discusses how clients drive value at a CPA firm. Clients play a vital role in any business, and accounting firms are no exception. Keep listening to meet our managing partner, Jim Petra. Hey, uh, everybody. I am Jim Petra. I'm the managing partner here at Singer Lewak. And uh, I wanted to take a little bit of time today to, you know, veer from our standard podcast of services and talking about the things we do and how we do them and the different things that we provide and the technical expertise that we have to kind of veer a little bit away from that to talk about the firm itself and how driving value in the firm itself translates to how we service our clients and what what all of that means to the stakeholders of of Singer Lee Wack. Like every like every business or every company or every organization out there, we are obviously concerned about driving value. We're focused on it every day. Uh, and when I talk about driving value, I really talk about sort of the three key components. Driving value for our clients, driving value for our team members, and driving value for our partners. I'm going to talk a little bit about how all of these things tie together how all of them are interrelated and how all of those translates to how we service our clients, how we take care of our people and sort of what, what's sort of the, the foundational aspects of that and why it's so, why it's so important, why driving value is so important. Most of us tend to, when we talk about value, tend to focus on owners, right? Partners, profitability, What's more basic than that for uh, driving value, right? Those are sort of, that's the sort of the basic concept of driving value in a business. But, but what do we, uh, and, and in that context, what do we at Singer Lewak consider our, our value drivers for the partners and owners? How is that any different from any other business? Or is it different from any other business? You know, uh, no, no accounting firm's discussion would ever be complete without a conversation about GAP. So I'm going to throw one in here. You know, GAP defines value basically as the price it would be received in an orderly transaction uh, between market participants. So if it's so in that context, why would why would an accounting firm be any different, right? What what what's going to become what's going to be valuable if we were to try to sell this firm in an orderly transaction, is that fundamentally how you determine value in a CPA firm versus any other business? Those are those are kind of key questions that we answer. And really kind of the bottom line is I don't think that a CPA firm is any different. We look at our value probably very similarly to how other businesses, organizations look at value. And we try to drive value in probably some of the same ways. Uh, what 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 determines that then? Obviously, the thing that comes to mind most often is uh, financial performance. Of course, you know, I talked about it just a little bit ago. Is what's the profitability of the business? What's the balance sheet look like? What's the uh, trends in that business? What are the profitability trends? What's what's consistent profitability in that business? All of those things, no different in a CPA firm than any other firm, any other business. Similarly, of quality work and reputation. So you can be profitable, but if you're if you're, you know, not not doing quality work or you have a bad reputation, that may impact your ability to sell the business, or or the ability to sell the business, or the ability to sell the business for the price that you might want it at. Uh, thirdly, specialization. Organizations, businesses, CPA firms are no different that uh, have specializations that are unique to the marketplace generally are more valuable than organizations and businesses that do not have specializations that are unique to that organization. Fourthly is, uh, you know, I I call it succession planning, but really it's about workforce and sustainability. You have a good 
solid workforce in place? Does that make the business sustainable? Um, and what does that mean for the organization on a going concern basis? And lastly is, you know, our fifth item that we look at when we're talking about the value of Singer Lewak and driving value in Singer Lewak is, is the brand. Is the brand of Singer Lewak good? How is it received in the marketplace? And that's closely related to reputation and all of those things. But so financial performance, quality work, specialization, in place, strong workforce and sustainability of the business and a strong brand. So those are sort of the five key aspects of you know, what we look at when we talk about valuation at Singer Lewak and how we value the firm as executive team here at, at Singer Lewak. And, and you can see that's very little difference between us and a other business out there. You know, those are the things that you might look at in any, any organization on how to drive value. But what does is, what is that all sort of boil down to? You know, we talked about value for clients, value for team members, and value for partners. Well, those five items really kind of boil down to the sort of value for partners. You know, partners are going to realize their value in the firm if it's performing well financially, if we're doing quality work, if we're specializing, if we have a good workforce in place, a strong workforce in place with a great succession plan and has a good brand. But what does that mean for our team members and driving value for our team members and driving value for our clients? Well, it is pretty simple when you kind of step back and you think about it. Um, fundamentally, all five of those categories that drive value for Singer Lewak are dependent on our clients. So we can't drive value in our firm without providing value to our clients. Everything, when it, we consider valuation and the value of our firm and the profitability of our firm and all those things I just talked about, revolve around providing a valuable experience uh, to our clients. And when we manage the firm, that is the foundational concept in this firm provide a valuable experience to our clients. Um, but but how do we do that, right? You know, we have sort of this goal, this, this primary prime directive, if you want to call it that, if you're a Star Trek fan, is to provide a valuable experience to our clients. How do we do that? Well, the most important thing we do, I'd say the second most important thing that we do is we have to have systems in place to do so. So we have to invest in systems and processes and methodologies and all of those things in order to be able to do it. And perhaps most importantly, not perhaps, most importantly, is we have to provide value to our own people. So in order to provide clients value, we have to have systems to do so, and we have to provide value to our team members, our own team members because we have to have the best and the brightest in order to provide that service level to our clients. So having systems to do so uh, really quickly is sort of, you know, foundational to everything. Because even if we, you know, go out and we hire the people and we get the best people and all those things, they're not going to be able to do what they need to do unless we have the systems in place to do so. In order to do that, we, we invest a lot of time and effort and money in our firm service groups. Um, our firm service groups, as opposed to our client service groups, are those team members in the firm and those organizations within the firm which uh, really sort of have the mission of ensuring that the client service teams have the resources and tools they need to perform their mission effective and efficiently. And we think we have some of the best people and organizational leadership in, in the industry. Uh, from our COO and our CFO, all through our firm service teams, our IT support teams, our marketing teams, our human resources teams, 
training teams. We think we have some of the best people in the market and we try to treat those people with the same sort of level and, and respect that we would treat our, our client service teams. We view them every bit as professional as we view our client service people because our client service people rely on them in order to take care of our clients, which, as we talked about, are the primary driver of value for the partners in the firm. So what do our firm service tr- groups do? They make sure we have quality control systems in place to ensure expertise and compliance and quality systems are all there to make sure our clients are getting the, the sort of the quality work product that they need every time uh, we issue a report or a tax return or a consulting engagement, they make sure we have the quality systems in place to do so. And to make sure we comply with all the professional standards and statutory requirements that are that are littered through this country and internationally that we have to comply with and our clients have to comply with. But our quality control people are also tasked with looking forward and saying, not just today, I need to be thinking not just about today, but I need to be thinking about tomorrow and making sure that our client service people are prepared to deal with things that are coming in the marketplace, whether it's AI or expected new statutory standards or a shrinking marketplace where we're going to have to be working under international standards or some other statutory requirement in some other nation. So they have to be looking forward at where the firm's evolving, where the industry's evolving, where the government's evolving, all of these different things, where the litigation environment is evolving, and they need to be looking forward and planning to address those things. And we believe we have a really good practice quality center that does that stuff, which puts our clients in a very safe position um, and a position where they can rely on us to do those things and to make sure we have their best interest at heart when we are performing services for them. What else do our firm services group do? They make sure we have the technology systems in place to provide those tools to our client service people for efficient job execution and collaboration with each other, our clients, and all the other stakeholders that are involved in services that we perform. And they do this while maintaining really good, really strong data and information security. So you're always working with protecting the client, protecting the client's information as well as your own information. So Our technology teams, our IT teams are always looking at how to do things more efficiently, how to do things in a more effective manner, how to do things in a consistent manner throughout the firm, and how to do it in such a way that we protect the information and data of our our clients. And uh, as we just talked about, perhaps most importantly, our firm service groups are responsible for developing systems and cultural initiatives aimed at hiring, developing, and training our fantastic uh, client service people and professionals, uh, and frankly, even training themselves and their firm service people within the firm as well. And we spend quite a bit of effort in trying to figure out what the best systems are, what the best processes are in order to provide our team members with those uh, uh, things. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But, uh, you know, providing those things that make their experience here a positive experience, but also provide them the tools they need to excel. But it also, firm services is also responsible for developing the hiring initiatives the uh, and the developmental initiatives to make sure that they are, high, we're hiring, hiring the right people and we're training the right people. So when you look at all this stuff, you know, having the systems, having strong firm service groups and all these other things are absolutely important, but what really are they doing? They are providing systems for our people. So everything at Singerly WAC really kind of boils down to our people. We can't take care of our clients 
the level we want to take care of our clients without really, really strong people. So we do, we invest a lot of effort into building systems and environments that support the people that are going to deliver the quality work, service, and specialization that our clients demand. Um, And in so doing, we build that strong, sustainable business and protect and build the brand and the reputation of the firm. So what do we provide our people? What do we try to provide our people? What do we invest time, effort, resources in? We try to provide them, A, with a rewarding career. And that's both financially. We try to give them financial incentives to be here, provide them with the compensation levels that they expect in the industry. And we're very committed to that. But B, we want to provide them a strong developmental road roadmap so they can see what their future looks like, that we have the tools to develop them, and we have the people, the leadership here committed to training them and spending the time that they need to develop those skills. So that's A, rewarding career, very committed to that. B, comfortable, supportive environment. Uh, and how do we look at a comfortable, supportive environment? We, we want our people to work where and how it is most effective for that team member and their service team while meeting the client's expectations. So, you know, flexible working environments uh, with the goal of servicing the clients in the most effective way. We treat them respectfully and ethically. Our, our leadership and our management teams are expected to treat our team members respectfully and ethically. And if they're not, then those leaders don't belong in the firm. And lastly, our leaders and developers are expected to care about the success and development and needs, both sort of financially, emotionally, uh, all of the different things that go into keeping somebody happy and satisfied, our leaders are expected, and our developers, you know, the training people, our firm service people that are building the systems for them, uh, are expected to have the emotional intelligence to help our team members grow and develop and be comfortable in the place that they're working. Lastly, we are committed to providing them the tools they need to perform their work from wherever they may be, whether they're a remote worker, whether they're 100% in the office, whether they're hybrid, wherever they are, we are committed to providing them the tools they need to work from that location. All of that, again, within the context of servicing the clients and making sure the clients get what they need out of it. So that includes training systems, that includes the software and tools, and all of the different operating processes and business business processes that they operate under. So yeah, that's it. That's how we see value here at Singer Lewak. Uh, one, take care of your people. Two, then they'll take care of your clients. And three, the clients will take care of the firm and the partners. Sit three steps, take care of people. They'll take care of the clients. The clients will take care of the firm. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of The Balancing Act by Singer Lee Wack. We hope you enjoyed the segment and gained some insight on how to keep your business balanced. You can tune in every Thursday morning to gain a sense of balance in this fast-paced business industry. You can listen on singerlewack.com, YouTube, or anywhere podcasts are available. We'll see you next time.